and let's see and i'm gonna just make sure i'm gonna do this once let me I'm going to just, all right. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys can hear me well. Um, she has taken her love for numbers and the love of beauty products and put them together to create products for her luxury beauty brand that is designed for today's contemporary woman. She has also taught thousands of women across the world how to style and care for their daughter's hair through her brand called Brown Girl's Hair. Her mission is to serve women by making sure women always smell good, yes, look good, and feel good with the products and services she provides. So we're going to be hearing from her in just a little bit, and I want to go ahead and jump right on into our next um, guest that we have. We have Miss Tia Kirby. She is um, a Dallas-based content creator, host, speaker, and social media influ influencer. Um, Tia is most known as a natural hair blogger, beauty blogger on YouTube and social media platforms, including her work as an influencer and content creator. She is a well-traveled professional lesion host and speaker, representing brands at trade shows, in-store events and conferences across the country. Her mission is to inspire others to learn and to love themselves while enhancing their own individual style and beauty. Tia is also the creator and host of the groundbreaking talk show entitled Heart of the Matter, which airs on Friday via YouTube channel. Heart of the Matter showcases the stories of triumphant individuals who have overcome obstacles that could have otherwise stopped or defeated them. It also boldly addresses taboo topics from a let's keep it real standpoint. Heart of the Matter is the platform that goes beyond, beyond social media to share the parts of people's journey that are not social media friendly. This platform was created to encourage and uplift others who may be going through or may have gone through something similar in their own lives. Heart of the Matter harbors connection and community letting viewers know they are not alone. So I introduce to you ladies and tonight, all of you that are on the call tonight, these two wonderful ladies, and I'm going to unmute them at this time so that they can properly um, say hello and welcome to all of the CEO chicks on tonight. Hi. <laughs> hello, everybody. Thanks Hi. for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Good, good. We're going to have a good time. I was I was so excited about the call because I'm like, you know what? Social media, I'm telling you, has really been picking up. And I'm there is never a day, a week, a month, a year that you can think that you have social media down pat because it changes mm -hmm. literally every single day. So I'm always eager to hear everything. So um, Shani, we'll start with you. If you could just tell us a little bit about your story, how you got started. We would love to hear all about it. Well, uh, basically, I'm a mom of four. Uh, my first three children were all boys. So that was easy peasy. Straight to the barbershop, we good to go. <laughs> but my fourth child was my daughter, who um, ooh, by the time she got to be four or five, hair was like all right here. I had no clue of what to do with it because I have her fine hair and her hair was thick and coarse. So I was like, oh my goodness, this is back in like 2009 when there was not a whole bunch of, you know, YouTube gurus and the ones that did exist were doing it for women and not for kids. So I was search and search, couldn't find anything. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start it myself. So I started by um, just sharing my trial and error and journey with my daughter, just learning how to do her hair myself. And in doing that, I just started uploading like, um, pictures of just her hairstyles on YouTube. This is back in 2009 now. And so from there, people would ask me, well, can you do a tutorial to show us how you actually did the hairstyle? And that's pretty much how it started for me. So then I started to get into doing tutorials and it just grew from there. Wow. 2009, guys. 2009. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I think I started in about 2010. So everything was kind of just kind of, you know, getting out there, surfacing. Mm -hmm. Everybody was kind of having fun. Nobody right. was really thinking it business. You know, if I could go back, mm -hmm. you know, a couple exactly. years, I probably would have done some things a little bit different because right. I didn't know that it would take off 
it is today. And right. so I would have took it a little bit serious. Mm-hmm. So yeah, for mm-hmm. you to start in 2009, that was around the time everything was just starting to kick off. So yeah. that's a very good yeah. year, 2009, mm-hmm. 2010. And yeah. what about you? Um, mine is actually pretty similar. Um, when I started, I was in chat rooms. I I always tell people everything kind of happened for me on accidents. God's mm-hmm. my accident. <laughs> I kept. Um, I started really with a prayer. Um, I was relaxed all my life. All of it. I started with a prayer, asking God, please make me the original design of Tia, who you called me to be. And um, over time, I had always relaxed my hair and my very last relaxer in 2010, um, the crown of my hair broke off to literally about like a half an inch um, long and I looked like alfalfa and I was trying and I swore off perms at that point and I kept trying to figure out what to do with my hair. And then I joined some chat rooms about going natural. I really didn't know that it was about going natural or that it, it really meant what it meant to go natural. And I began to um, just kind of share things that I was doing with my hair as I was transitioning to natural. And um, even after I did my big chop and everything, and then people kept asking for a blog or a YouTube channel. And at the time I was too shy to do that. So I slowly started a blog, my uh, first blog, which was me, my girls and our natural curls. I have two daughters. Um, I'm also a mom. Um, I'm a mom of three, two girls and one boy. And um, over time, my blog, people began to ask for videos. And finally, I started my YouTube channel, but I didn't tell anybody about it, only the people in the chat rooms, because again, I was like super shy about um, doing it. Even if you go back, I want to say I started my channel in like 2012, more so as a hobby, not really, it just was kind of sporadic. But um, over time, it just, like you said, it just really kind of blew up. I wasn't, I didn't advertise my YouTube channel probably until like 2014. Nobody even knew I had one unless you were in the chat rooms or really asked me questions about a tutorial. And I just want to say that for tonight, for those that, that are watching, as you can see, everybody kind of just, you know, started something because it was fun to do. Nobody was really taking anything serious. But right. the moment when you do take your platform serious, that's when things begin to take off. That's when people begin to notice you notice your content, know what you're putting out there. So just take all of this, even if you haven't started your social media platform or you're thinking about it, you've been contemplating, you've been putting it you know, behind, just know you have three ladies that are on here where God has just really opened so many doors yeah. because we took that step mm-hmm. of faith to get in front of the mm-hmm. camera. So sometimes mm-hmm. you gotta, you know, don't allow fear to, you know, mm-hmm. get in the way of you really just getting in front of that camera because it's so, it is mm-hmm. so so key so that puts me to um, my first question to you know what platform would you recommend that you would say it's working really well for your business right now what would you say one or, or if there's multiple ones my top three i would say are because i started on youtube um if you're just starting out, you don't have a lot of time. I wouldn't necessarily say start on YouTube, but definitely start on Instagram. And um, if you can start a Facebook group, and the reason I say groups is because you don't have to pay for your posts to be seen. If they're in the group, they'll see your post. But if you start a page, the way you know the new algorithms go, it's yes. just like being in a group you know everybody that likes your page won't see the post you have to pay for that so facebook group instagram and youtube those are definitely the top three that i would focus on that's a very good point about the groups because as you said we're going to get to the algorithms a little bit later because i know that oh my goodness i have stories to share about mm-hmm. algorithms so mm-hmm. ladies if you Definitely want to get that's another way of promoting, another way of marketing yourself is to get into the groups. They're free. You're able to drop your information in. And a lot of them, they want that content for their page to continue to get the page to continue to grow. And a lot of times these groups are huge. Mm-hmm. So for those that are um, 
you know, really wanting to get your craft out there, really wanting people to know who you are and you feel like, okay, I'm just jumping in. I don't really have, you know, a lot of followers. Take advantage of those Facebook groups. That is something that you really want to use and do. And a lot of times you can go right into the Facebook search. You can find these groups. You can search it in, type in natural hair, and they'll start bringing up different pages. And even if some pages will ask, um, they're private, but a lot of times they'll have about five to 10,000 people in there. They just want to know that you're not going to go in there and spam up the page and do something, you know, inappropriate. So they kind of want to check you out and see who you're about. And once that happens, you can go live in those groups. Those people will tune in. Those people will come to that broadcast and you can take those viewers and put that information in that's going to send them back to your social media website. So you always want to be like a link tree. You always want to give those avenues to send them to other places so they can now see exactly what you have to offer, what else that you may have in store, what are you selling at that point. So you always have different streams of avenue to send that traffic there. So that's a very good um, tip that I wanted to just stress. Um, and you, Tia? Um, mine are actually the exact same. Um, I don't have a group as of yet. I am currently going through a rebranding. As I mentioned before, um, my blog was Me, My Girls, and Our Natural Curls. And it was basically me showcasing my, me taking my uh, care of my hair and theirs. But my girls are grown now, so, um, and in college. And so, of course, I'm no longer taking care of their hair. But um, I would definitely say YouTube was um, the most, um, beneficial. And then of course, um, Instagram has been very, very beneficial for me, um, within the last few years and then, um, or last couple of years, I should say. And then of course, I highly recommend always having your own website. Um, I'm currently relaunching, uh, going through a relaunching. So, uh, my website will be ready next month. And I'm super excited about it. But the reason I say that is because you own your own content on your website versus if something were to happen to Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, if they decided they were going to shut down, then all of your content is gone and you don't own the rights to it. Whereas um, on your site, then you constantly can help control the traffic to your site. Ooh, that's a good, that's very good. So mm. that's, that's something to think about ladies. That's really something to think about because mm -hmm. that can happen. We already see you yeah. know, Facebook or, you know, are shutting things down. Things are happening to their website or their, um, their site, their launch, whatever. So we already know that those things can pretty much take place. So that's something that we may, may need to think about. And I think GoDaddy is a good place. Is there any, any yeah. you recommend for that? Um, I went through GoDaddy. Um, and to get my domain name and of course posting and everything. My very first um, blog with me, my girls and our natural curls was directly through wordpress.com. Um, and then uh, I know a lot of people use Squarespace and, and those type of uh, sites that are extremely popular. But the thing I think that to think the most about is your followers. Because if, again, if those other uh, social media platforms shut down, then you've lost your followers. You no longer have truly access to them. Whereas on your website where you're capturing their information and those things, then you stay in contact and connected with your followers. Got you. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to that, Shani? I totally agree with her. I agree because I started out on Blogger and then I decided to go to WordPress.org, the one that you pay for, you know, and build yourself. And for the very reasons that she's saying, you want to always have control over your content. So, and another way, well, I won't get into that yet, but. <laughs> so, but yeah, I totally agree with Tia. Good. So ladies, I hope that you're getting that. So websites is very important. I know that I kind of got away from that. Um, but now that's bringing back to my, to, you know, I may need to go back and revamp that because. I don't want my stuff to just disappear or, you know, all the hard work that you put in your content. Mm -hmm. You don't want that to just go away. You want to make sure that you are in full control. Um, and so you know, don't get complacent like me thinking, oh, I got a store site. You know, I'm good, you right. know, but to make sure that you have where you can write your own content, put what mm -hmm. you want up and have total rights to that. And nobody can take that away from you. So yeah. you are revamping your um 
website and then to make sure because I think too I think for me um, even when you get in a website make sure that it's something that you know how to maneuver and do because I think for me I got it so coded up let me tell you and I'm telling this to just um, have a, just a shareable moment right now do not allow anybody to code up your websites because you have no control over it. You can't do anything. You will not know how to do anything and you will have to pay for every single move. So make sure when these professional people get over these websites that you really ask questions and really have full control over your site because they will get you. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I don't know if you girls have, um, if you ladies have experienced that, but I'm telling you like, it's, it was a nightmare, like totally mm -hmm. a big, big nightmare. But we won't we won't get into all of that. Um, mm -hmm. My next question I want to ask, uh, what are some automated um, tools that you see the most growth on um, your social media platforms? Are there anything that you can suggest that that's something that's new that's coming out? You know, we kind of know all of the different the basics of things. But is there anything that you would like to add or contribute that's really helping um, see growth in the platforms? Well, this kind of piggybacks off of having your own website. What I noticed that continually keeps traffic on my blog website is Pinterest. Mm. Because if you pin pictures from your website post to Pinterest, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you do have to make sure that your pictures are visible and that it you know, has some type of title on it that draws your audience to it, but it constantly keeps traffic on my website. Pinterest is huge for my website. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's awesome to know. Mm -hmm. And I think Pinterest kind of get overlooked at time because I like to go on there to get little ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really good. So ladies, write that down, Pinterest. Pinterest is something that you can use. As she said, you can take the photos, drive the traffic back to your blogs, to your site. So, hey, don't sleep on Pinterest because it's working. And it's in this Pinterest is the hidden secret because I've even gone to my daughter's school, the first day of school, meeting her teacher. And she looked at her and she was like, I know your face. I saw you on Pinterest. Yeah. You know, like, so I get that all of the time. So don't sleep on Pinterest. Like yeah. you do your blog, take nice pictures, you know, make sure you have your uh, website on your picture. Cause people love to steal pictures and post them and then, you know, attach them to their stuff. So make sure you watermark it. That might sound old fashioned, but I'm telling you, you know, even if you just put your Instagram handle or something on it to to identify that picture as belonging to you so that if somebody does decide to, you know, filter it, you still get, you know, your notoriety from your picture. But yeah, Pinterest is huge. Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Tia? Um, I definitely agree um, with the Pinterest. Um, as far as Pinterest goes, it like, I keep hearing that Pinterest, we're all sleeping on Pinterest because it does so much for drawing um, traffic to the website. One of my um, things that I used to do um, when I had my blog up was often I would give like a first liner or something that says, oh, you know, if I'm wanting to deep condition my hair, I'm going to use this, this and dot, 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 find more about my blog and always direct people to go back to my blog. So it's uh, in your captions. Um, but I would say the uh, platform that I feel like has really been helping me as far as creating an aesthetic um, is using, there's an app, it's called, um, um, like it's U-N-U-M. -uh -um. It's like, uh -um, I'm clearing my throat. Literally it's called U-N-U-M -uh -um, and it allows you to kind of map out um, what picture to post next to see if it matches, how well it goes, um, with the current pictures that you have, that way your um, layout on your Instagram feed doesn't look so um, discombobulated or that it flows a little bit better. So every time before I get ready to post a picture, I'm kind of already planning out um, what picture I'm going to post next or if the picture even aligns or looks good with the aesthetic. So there's uh, Planoly, of course. Um, I forgot the other um, there's one that starts with an M, but my favorite one I find that's most user-friendly is an um. Um. Yes, and you can get that from the App Store. U-N-U-M. And that's a free app. It's a free app. So, ladies, if you're trying to plan out your content, you know, you want that good, that visual, 
I'm getting ready to download an um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready to get my whole platform together. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's those things like that that you can share that a lot of people may not know. Right. And they're just sitting there and people are sitting here stressed out. And I tell them all the time, there's an app for anything. You can it search. Is anything and it'll come up my thing is if you find two or three things download them because nine times out of ten you'd be like no i don't want that one go to oh well this one works out a little bit better or this is a little more simpler so i always tell people search anything and i promise you you will probably before you spend money look for the free stuff free 99 all day Do right <laughs> your business so I mean, was it new to you, um, Shonik? Have you heard of on? Um, I can't even say that was it. new um, to me. That was new one to me. I had never I, heard of that one. I wrote it right. I'm telling yeah. you, I wrote it right down. And I hope you ladies are writing it down as well. Was there any other that you guys wanted to share? And you said a you said another one. I didn't quite understand. And I think it started with a. Oh yes, there's uh, Plan Planoly, and um, the other app is Mosaico. Um, and that one is um, spelled M-O-S-A-I-C-O, I believe. Um, but of the three, I found an, um, or <clears throat> to be my favorite. <laughs> Most user-friendly, right? Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So there you go. You have at least two or three that you guys can, you know, play around with, get your content together, and actually start making it look more professional so that you can get more um, viewership. A lot of times people go, sometimes I just post because I, you know, I was at a place where I could just put up anything at one for these algorithms that we're going to get into. But, you know, for some people, they really like to plan out their content. They really like to have a color scheme going and keep everything, you know, fresh and nice. And that is a key thing to attract businesses when you are just starting out. So that's yeah. something that you want to jump into and go ahead and get that down pat. So Download that free 99 tonight, okay? No more excuses. No more excuses, okay? All right, so I, I want to I want to get through all the questions because I know we got a little um, late start. Uh, what was one of your um, biggest social media mistakes? What is something that, you know, you were like, you know what, if I could turn back the hand of time, I am not even going to do this anymore. Not at all. Um, for me, I would say being inconsistent. Yeah, um, my biggest oh yep (laughs) that was gonna be my biggest um or has been my biggest um downfall is whenever I fall off or am not staying consistent with my posting um that definitely takes a big hit I used to think that I could just get on there when I felt like it but in order to keep my audience engaged then I have to stay consistent what about you Shani same thing same exact that's the most important thing when it comes to social media is consistency because it's so many distractions and you know they could be over here looking at this person over there but the only way to constantly keep them real then is you have to constantly keep content coming at them so so how how often do you think that you need to keep that content coming is it once a week is it twice is it a couple times a day um i only post once a day. Um, I used to try to post two and three times a day, but, but come on. <laughs> that, that will take over your life. I didn't have that much content. I'm a mom, a wife. I got other stuff to do. So um, I try to stay consistent with just posting once a day. Mm-hmm. Once a day. What about you? YouTube, I mean, to really grow at a decent rate at this point, how it's changed so much, it's pretty much three videos a week. I don't. I personally don't have the time for that, so I I try to do one a week. Yeah. Okay. One video every week. That's and the minimum. How is YouTube helping your business? Are your videos being monetized? Yes, my videos are monetized. They are. Um, the The main thing I would recommend is to make sure if you use music, don't use copyrighted music because they will automatically you out from you know your videos being monetized so try to you have to be very careful when it comes to the music yes they will i am a they will send you a quick email really quick and say (laughs) you know you don't have to do anything but it will not be monetized okay exactly and you will exactly i got so 
Yeah, I got so frustrated with that. I just went on ahead and got my own little theme song. So it's the same song in all my videos because I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Cause they like yeah. took so much of my money away because of that. So because sometimes you can go to those websites where it's supposedly free music, mm -hmm. but at any point the owner of that music can pull it back. So right. at the time you used it, it could have been free, but then maybe six months later or a year later, when that you know, owner comes back to claim it, you know, they got you. And that's what happened to me. I was using a free site, but then, you know, it, you know, the um, owner who wrote the music or whatever decided, hey, I want rights to my music. And there was nothing I could do about it. I think for me, when I, um, when I upload videos to YouTube, they give you an option now on there. I think, you know, how you can go into the music section and then they'll say, mm -hmm. listen, these are some suggested songs that you can use. So I'll say, okay, well, let me go ahead and try to click these so that I can monetize because mm -hmm. I want the money to come in. And that's something, too, lady, that you want to do. You want to be able to be sleep and have that money rolling right on in. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and it's, it's always great when your phone, your PayPal, you know, uh, dings and say, hey, you know, you just get paid for some YouTube videos and it always comes right on time <laughs> so yeah. you always want to make sure you stay in the guidelines do what you need to do and even if you have to create so even if you know somebody that can just do some little simple some little simple and like as shonic was saying find you one song stick with that um and i'll and, and there and and i guess i can put it in the um the on the page but um coach jen has actually it was really good and he has music that you can use and Hey, that could be your theme song all the time. So mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it being copyrighted. You don't have to worry about stopping your coins and keep mm -hmm. it moving. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody want to add anything to that? Um, I, I post twice a week on Instagram. I mean, not Instagram, on YouTube. Um, right now I'm at once a week, but I'm gearing back up to getting back to twice a week Tuesdays. Um, I post like hair, beauty content. And then on Fridays, I post my talk show episodes of my talk show. Um, and I'm kind of the same way. I use the same rotation of songs and they fared me uh, pretty well. Um, I usually go to download music from, or I used to, from SoundCloud, but I would always try to find something that is not um, popular, if that's the word. Um, as far as like, if it has like a popular song on the radio now, I just go away from it. I just try to use like something simple, like, you know, beats or just something that's like low key and then just keep recycling those same few songs or whatever. And there was a question of someone um, saying, um, how do you even know when something is copywritten? um beforehand and the, the thing of it is is basically if you don't have rights to that then that's when the red flag is going to come up if that owner did not give you permission to then no a lot of times even and even for me um there's a there's a criteria that you have to meet on youtube whenever you have a partnership it may be like a thousand followers and three thousand likes so it's something of nature but once you're there you can apply for partnership and for me i am partnered with full screen a lot of times they would give us thousands and thousands of songs to choose from where you can actually use those and put them on your video so it's kind of like that um you just kind of like she said you kind of want to stay away from the latest songs some people can get by with it but everybody can't do it and you don't want to block you know revenue you want to keep the stream going so find instrumentals you know things like that you may have to cut and piece things that's a little way to get around it because they'll listen to that first you know 30 seconds of it and if it's saying something for it, it's going to pick it up every single time so just yeah. be careful with that all right um, I was looking to see if we had some questions coming in. Um, it says, is it true that lives are more marketable than pre-recorded videos? Anybody? I wouldn't want to say marketable. I think they they are more they can be more effective because people like that like real time where it's not edited and all this and that, where you just are a hundred percent whatever you are at that time. 
Mm -hmm. So I think lives are a lot more attractive to people these days because they know that, hey, if you mess up, there's no covering up. It, it's who you are. Exactly. Yeah. Did you want to add something to to that? Uh, no, I think uh, she hit the nail on the head. I think um, part of it is your audience. Um, and then also it just depends on you and if you're comfortable doing lives. Um, will I always do lives? No, I do them, but not as much as I do pre-recorded content, but maybe I need to step out of the side of my box and do more lives. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, for me, I think, um, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. lives because people love to get on just, just like tonight before we started the call, we were so excited to be able to hear each other, to be able yeah. to, you know, sometimes you just don't want to just see that video and that pre-recorded video all the time you kind of mm -hmm. want to feel like I know her I'm talking to her mm -hmm. like she's reachable talkable you know that kind mm -hmm. of feedback because that's how you build a foundation for your business mm -hmm. that's how you get people to see the real you they trust you mm -hmm. you build your brand like that so mm -hmm. it makes a big difference mm -hmm. um so to me I think that's you know they love recorded videos too but they love it when you take the time to come on and share and talk and hear if they have any kind of comments or suggestions or, you know, concern, you know, you telling them, hey, I saw your picture. You know, people like that one-on-one -on -one that, mm -hmm. you know, making it, and they will always come back. They will always remember that. Mm -hmm. The lives make a big, big impact. That's why you see most people go live at night. They mm -hmm. sell you know, they have the most people engaging. People mm -hmm. love to comment. People love to be shouted out. People love for you to say their name. People mm -hmm. love for you to even say, oh my gosh, you answered my question. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to understand that sometimes when you're in the spotlight, people look at you as a mentor, as inspiration or motivation. So you have, when you speak, you have to make sure like you speak speaking to thousands. You're really coming from the heart. Like you're really being passionate, not just putting on a show, but mm -hmm. they like to feel that. And so it makes a huge difference to me whenever you go live. So whoever asked, asked that question, I hope that we answered it. Um, what can you say? How do you um, stay up to date? Well, like what's going on with social media? Everything is changing. So is there something that you kind of do to stay on track, something that you check, you have some kind of system, or you just kind of go with the flow? Um, I would say I kind of, well, partly I go with the flow. Um, I also um, subscribe to like um, Instagram, um, their actual page to kind of watch some of the stuff that they're doing. And then for YouTube, um, there are a few people that I follow just to kind of, because they say that's all they do is talk about and you can find a hundred mm -hmm. YouTube videos um, mm -hmm. of people who that's all they do is report on what do what's next and things to do to help grow your platform um they're on youtube so that's really i guess what i would say my medium for it mm -hmm. okay what about you shawnee it's the same um the youtube gurus that that's all they do is focus on the changes that are coming with all the different platforms and ways to get around it and things you can do to um you know work with the changes to your advantage so that's also the same okay I know we're moving right along, guys, and I want to make sure I get any questions at the end. Um, what are some strengths that help you in blogging? Are there any benefits from any of all that? Hmm. Strengths that help? I think what, what will help the most is writing down all of your ideas because a lot of times, like, I could be, I don't know, I could be cooking or doing something else, and I would get an idea for something, but if I don't write it down, I'll quickly forget, and maybe, like, keep a little notebook with all your ideas in it, because um, sometimes if you don't brainstorm like that, you can find a hard time coming up with just content, but if you constantly keep some type of journal or notebook, and it, you can just pull from it when you run out of, you know, ideas or you feel like you're in the, in the spot where oh I just can't think of anything else to do right now you know you can always go to that so you always have to have some type of content to work with yeah. okay Tia do you have anything you want um, to add? I, I actually love what she um what uh she said I I would say authenticity and um 
just being yourself. Like, don't go in thinking you have to, you know, it was the greatest times. It was the best of times, you know, just go in and just <laughs> talk and have um, a normal conversation. Be the same as you would uh, talking to your best friend. And I think that that is probably the thing that really helped me the most as far as gaining an audience because they felt like they were tuning into, you know, I'm, I'm their girlfriend talking to them about what to do next or things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know I'm going to jump right into something that I know everybody on here that's like, we want to know, oh my gosh, what are you guys doing that is helping you beat algorithms? Because they are so annoying. And I just want to share a little bit um, of mine is because all of a sudden, like a few months ago, I don't know what this, I'm going to mute you guys just for one second. All of a sudden, um, I was having about maybe, I'm used to 100,000, 200,000, even a million views. Um, I don't know what that noise is. I'm trying to see. Um, sorry, guys. But, um, you know, with Instagram, it kind of just threw me into a loop. And all of a sudden, it was like the views went from a million to like a thousand. And I'm like, what happened? And then I saw a massive decrease in followers. And I'm like, what happened? And so I found out like, hey, you know, algorithms is real. Some things are happening and people aren't able to see you because Instagram just picked it up. And I'm like, what is going on? And so, you know, people are like, yeah, we don't even see your content. It's not coming through my feed anymore. So what are you doing? Because I had to do a whole bunch of research and I'm trying to build it back up and, you know, stay in that place because you can be up here and Instagram, Facebook, can you switch it all the way around? And it's done. Well, you know, the unfortunate part about that is I think the reason it's like that is because it's money driven. Yes. They want you to pay for your views now. And so that's why you see, like, you know, you know, it goes right through Facebook where you have to pay to get from 2.5 thousand views to 10,000 views, you have to pay so many dollars. And that's really what it is now. It's all about them um, making money off of you advertising your stuff now versus you getting, just like they did with the Facebook pages. You know, so, and, so it's almost like to a certain degree, your followers don't even matter anymore because they're only going to allow so many people to see your timeline and then you're going to have to pay for the visibility for the rest of them. How to get around that? I don't know. Hashtag, hashtags are still good. Um, you know, getting other people's pages to feature your, pe your pictures and stuff like that. But, you know, it's all about them making money. So, you know, that's really my only answer to that. Okay. What about you, Tia? Um, I really agree with her 100%. I'm just like, I don't even know. Um, I used to drive myself crazy trying to get past al algorithms. I think really just staying consistent and like she mentioned, using the hashtags. Something that I do often is I stay in my Insta stories. I post every day in my Insta stories. That way, even if they don't see me in the timeline, if they, you know, if they're following me, then I'm at least floating at the top saying, hey, did you catch this? Hey, I posted, a, I, you, did you see my new post or my latest post? Go and, um, you know, click on it or go and hit like, or I share a video or stuff like that. I just try to do as much staying visible on that aspect, in that aspect, because algorithms will drive you bananas. Yep. Yeah. Yes, it will. And I think that is a very good thing um, to make sure that you're active on your Instagram story all the time. Post things that are going to have people to respond, to ask a question. That's a great thing. As you said before, hashtags are very good to do as well. Um, and also, you know, just to make sure that you're being active on your page, commenting back, um, 
and posting content too. You know, always keeping a video going, that, that really makes a big difference. Um, switching up on your hashtag really makes a big difference. So I'm mm -hmm. always constantly asking a question, hey, do you think this hairstyle look good or do you think this will look good? Or, mm -hmm. you know, comment below, what, what's your favorite hairstyle for the week? You know, and start getting people to engage because the more they engage, the more they're going to get your page visible, the, the better your chances are to get into the explore page. And it's the same thing, you know, tagging somebody, asking somebody to tag somebody, um, doing a giveaway with somebody, that helps also. Uh, collaborations, those things, are, these are ways that you can help beat algorithms and, you know, kind of get around without them really know what you're doing because you're networking, you're communicating, but yet you're still targeting different audiences. So definitely, definitely, definitely don't get frustrated with algorithms because they're here to stay. We just gotta know how to maneuver around. We gotta know how to, you know, get through some of those little lump holes. So if you got into that thing, you know, don't think I'm like, what happened to my account? Is Has it been hacked? Because I'm not used to these low views. Mm -hmm. What is going on? And you know, and once people were like, you know, I don't see the content, you know, those are some of the things that you got to, you know, keep going. And one thing that I did when I researched that I want you guys to write now is switch your hashtags out monthly. Because what happens is if you constantly use it month at the month at the month at the month, which can end up leading to a year, it will type, it will have like a type of spam. So it will look like you're spamming all the time and that will that can block you. So you kind of want to switch up on your hashtag tags, change some things out, you know, go back into, we talked about this before, go back into your notes section and group them, put your hair here, your fashion hashtags here, whatever, whatever your different categories are and kind of just switch them up so that they can't figure out what you're doing. So that's kind of another little tip to be algorithms. And we're going to just quickly wrap this up. Um, can you share any benefits of, you know, collaborations, how it has catapulted your business? And um, and I really just want you to just quickly just share how, you know, social media has opened so many doors for you guys to create. And I know for you, Shonic, I saw that you now have your products in a store. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Like within the first month, we were able to get our, my product called Kissy Girl into uh, one of our local beauty supply stores, which actually they own the largest chain of beauty supply stores in the state of Georgia. So we're starting with one store. Awesome. But, uh, we're excited about that. So, and we're also in a salon up in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So. Awesome. Now, do you, would you say that from the collaboration on social media, networking, how do you think that that played a part? Social media? Actually, what played a part in that was uh, on Facebook. My husband actually posted, um, you know, the products on his Facebook page and one of his relatives saw it and he was working at the beauty supply store at the time and he went and showed it to the owner of the store. And that's how we were able to get in. Awesome. See how social see how social media can take you right mm -hmm. to where you need to be. You know, it's yep. all about, you know, the right person seeing it. But guess what? None of that would have taken place if she didn't step out and put something on or her husband didn't step out and put it on Facebook. So you never right. know who's watching. And you Tia. Um, for me, I think um I guess collaboration wise, it uh, it always gives me a new audience. It allows me to open doors to an audience that wouldn't otherwise know about me um, or just to show my skill set. Somebody in, um, for instance, your audience may um, be interested in learning how to do something that I'm teaching or just interested in um, certain things. Recently, I just spoke at a, a huge conference in L.A., um, and it was all because I decided to step out on faith and sin. I saw the lady uh, posting about it on um, social media and I sent her a video um, saying, hey, I want to emcee your, you know, your conference. And just from that one little video within 10 minutes, I was on the phone with her and she booked me for um, emceeing the conference. So mm -hmm. social media goes like so far, just awesome. it's unreal. And, and quickly, can you just tell just a little bit of some of the things that are working with all, a lot of these multi-million dollar brands. 
um, you know, can you please just share that? Yeah, um, it, it's been so cool. I think um, it's allowed me to travel. I, I That's something I've always wanted to do just beyond outside of work or whatever. I just always wanted to travel. And um, I had, um, I've had brands that have reached out to me to come and um, work events with them or just kind of meet and greet and draw my audience in. And last year I traveled more places than I've been in my entire life. Wow. And um, in fact, I'll be in DC this coming weekend at the Ubiquitous Hair Show um, at the My Organics booth. And um, it just allows me and I, I love it because I'm a creative person and it challenges me. So I'm, I've worked with um, hair brands, makeup brands, um, fashion brands, just all kind, doing all kinds of, um, and also lifestyle and travel brands, um, just doing what I love to do and allowing me to turn that into a career, whereas it was just a hobby. Let me show you what I do with my hair today. Now I get paid for that and paid for my creativity. And that is like nothing but God, nothing Amen. but God, nothing but God and paid to do. Yes, we got, right. see, that's what I'm telling you guys. We have women on here that are bossing it up, that are really dominating, I mean, their social media. I mean, here it is, you're taking a hobby to a business, and I understand yeah. I have been there, and I'm telling you, the doors that open for you, the platforms, being able to speak, people just being able to pay you just to stand up and smile. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous how social, how powerful social media are. And believe it or not, people will look up to you and they are so, I mean, excited to meet you, greet you. Yes. And that is what you can do with your the same way these businesses are others. You can do that as well. You can get a brand ambassador. You can get people to, you know, go up under your wing and, be able to help catapult your business as well so don't sleep on social media really start digging in there doing your lives you know really you know taking advantage of the hashtag the information out there take the websites your stores all of this plays a big part and mm -hmm. as you can see we have two great entrepreneurs on here tonight that really wanted to just share um their story you know, we have Shanique with her products inside of stores, you know, in salon. You know, she's really known on Pinterest for all of her amazing hairstyles. And if you haven't had a chance, I'm going to let her tell you in just a minute where to find these little girl hairstyles. And they look absolutely amazing. And as she said before, she will be with Mayel in, um, in D.C. And had Monique Rodriguez on and I'm telling you guys that is an awesome brand she is a sweet and phenomenal person yes. um, I'm telling you guys it's a it's some big things happening on social media but you never know if you don't step out of the box you will never mm -hmm. know where it's going to take you if you don't take that, that leap of faith if you don't turn that camera on if you don't remain consistent consistency will pay off it will pay off for you. It will pay off for your business. And I promise you, you will you will get familiar with this and you'll be like, okay, so when I'm doing one at today, once <laughs> a week, twice a week, you want to come on? Come on. I'm going to invite you on. Get your friend, get your sister. Y'all do a collaboration. I mean, really, let's just take this social media by storm and let's do what we need to do. And let's conquer and, you know, really get, you know, um, to know our platforms, one platform at a time. Yes. So um, I know that we have got started a little late tonight and we're going to wrap it up. If you ladies can please just tell all of the CEOs where they can find you so they can stay up to date and follow you on your social media platform. We'll start with you, Tia. Oh, okay. Um, I am on YouTube um, as Tia Kirby. That's T-I-A-K-I-R-B-Y. Um, and of course, um, you can find me on um, Instagram and Facebook and uh, pretty much everywhere, Pinterest, um, everywhere. You can find me on at Tia Kirby uh, or at Tia Kirby. That's T-I-A-K-I-R-B-Y. And then soon next month, I'll be launching TiaKirby.com. And um, I really want to just real quick add on, I know that she was encouraging you, you all to get on camera and everything. I just to, I always tell people to start where you are with what you have. Don't feel like you have to have like all of this equipment, this big camera, all of this lighting. Start with what you have. I literally tell people all the time. I started on my MacBook um, in my bathroom and I was super shy about it. I was like my very first video. I was like, and my name is Tia. And now I'm like, hey, girl. So I'm saying that to just encourage you to just step outside of your box. And the more comfortable you'll get, 
the better, the more consistent you become, the easier it'll get and it'll just be bomb. Just enjoy it and love what you do. Yes. And you, Shani, where can we find you? You can find all of my hairstyles for little girls, big girls, and she's a teenager now, but from when she was six up to 13 on brown girls hair, we're brown girls hair everywhere, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, you Google brown girls hair, she'll pop right up. Wow. Um, and then my um, luxury beauty brand for women is called Kissy Girl, K-I-S-S-E-G-I-R-L dot com and we're also on instagram and facebook awesome so i hope that you have um their information and we'll make sure that we put that in the um, chat group as well so you that you can follow their pages and stay up to date with what they're doing and so you can see how well their social media is going so you can really start diving into your social media so i hope tonight has been a call where it's going to impact and really you know get you off your booties <laughs> And do what you need to do. Yeah, <laughs> we're not taking. Look, we're not gonna have no more excuses. We're gonna do what we need to do. We're gonna dominate. We're gonna get our platforms going. And guess what? We're all in this together. And we can collaborate with one another. There's no competition. Cause guess what? God has room enough for everybody. But That's until right. you show your gift to the world, you're gonna be just sitting there like, what is my purpose? But the purpose is already inside you. He's already equipped you with what you need. So you got to take that step, turn your camera on, and do what you need to do for your business, okay? It's just that simple. It's okay if you mess up. It's okay if technology fails. It happens. It happened tonight. But did it stop the call? Absolutely not. You know, better late than never, you know, but it, you know, it wasn't denied. We're here. Things happen, but that's how you grow. That's how you learn. That's how you gain more. And you can't allow things to stop you. You got to you gotta keep going and it's going to pay off. And then when you, whenever the next person come in, you can now take what you have and share it. That's why I wanted to drop some nuggets tonight because there's always something that somebody else knows that you may not know that you can now grasp and take and put that information towards your business and see the results. So if you guys have found something tonight, I want you to go back into the chat group. I want you to respond. I want you to tell me if you download the app that mm -mm, I'm going to be doing that tonight. <laughs> I'm excited about learning about a new app. I hope you are too. And if you are new to our CEO chit chat call, thank you so much for joining. And I just want to say there is an event coming up September 15th. Chicago. It is a business mixer. You don't want to miss it. Please visit our website. It is www.ceochicksonline.com. You can stay up to date with all the events, where they're going to be at. And also, if you want to one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, we have phenomenal coaches. All the information is there. Blogs are there. I'm telling you, just go to the website, take a look around. I promise you, you will find something that you will need that will fit the need for you personally, corporately, for your business. It's all there. So I just want to tell my guests tonight, thank you ladies, so much for coming on and talking with us and sharing your on social media and um, your wisdom and knowledge on how you are rocking it. You girl, you ladies, I keep saying girls, I don't mean that by any harm, but you ladies are really doing a phenomenal job. I love your pages. I adore everything that you guys do. And I'm always looking and learning. So thank you so much um, for being on tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. So that's the end of our call tonight, ladies. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed night. Bye. Bye.